Hi, Julia. Thank you so much for joining me. Hi, Sonia. Great to see you. Awesome. All right, so let's get started. Um, what build announcements are you most excited about? Well, my team have uh, many announcements at this particular build, and there are three I'm really partial to. The first one is the Microsoft DevBox. The second one is the general availability of Azure Container Apps. And the third one is, um, is, the, gen is the general availability of uh, Java Spring Apps uh, Enterprise tier uh, at build conferences. So with the Microsoft DevBox, the thing I'm really excited about is that it's a new cloud service that provides developers and their team with self-service access to high performance workstations in the cloud. And developers can pre-configure the workstation with any tools, the library, framework for their specific project, all while maintaining security and corporate governance. And it really reduces new developer onboarding from potentially days to minutes. It allows developers to easily work on other projects and try new tools. So I'm super excited about that. And then for container apps, it allows you to run microservices and containerized applications on a serverless container platform. And then one of the really nice thing about it is that it's built on the foundation of a set of powerful open source technology that delivers the same microservices benefits as Kubernetes, but it's in a fully managed kind of app hosting option. So as a developer, that means you don't have to worry about Kubernetes infrastructure. You don't have to worry about the hosting services. You just have to go focus on developing the business operation and the code that you can write. And then with Java Spring Apps, we, this is a close collaboration with has VMware. It solves the challenges of running Spring applications at cloud scale, also on Kubernetes. And very similarly for developers, you don't have to worry about you know, application lifecycle, monitoring, container intricacies. You can just work on, again, developing the business logic that you can work on. So those are the things I'm really excited about. Oh, that's awesome. Great. So we'd love to know specifically, how are these announcements relevant to Java developers? Yeah, Java developer has been a huge focus for my team. Um, I know there's a keynote coming up, uh, right, you know, in a, in a little bit, <clears throat> really focused on Java. For developer, if you think about a Microsoft DevBox announcement, as a Java developer, you probably want to provision you know, your own IntelliJ or Eclipse IDEs. You want to try to you know the Java runtime and you know whichever version you're currently using on, and you know, and then you can configure the entire thing exactly to what your development team standards are, and then you know you can preserve that standards in the cloud. And when you have a new developer joining, the new DevOps just shows up immediately like that. And then isn't that amazing? And then for container apps, we are very you know you can use. Java, you can use .NET, you can use Node to deploy you know, your Java applications in container apps with the same kind of benefit I just talked about. And obviously, Spring app is all about Java. Spring is the most popular Java microservices framework. So the Spring apps enterprise is really dedicated to our Java developers. Oh, that's awesome. That's wonderful. Um, so you quickly, you had mentioned VMware. How is Microsoft working with partners in the open source community? Can you tell us a little bit more there? Yeah, we have been spending so much time working with a lot of different partners. Even in this particular build, we have a set of big announcements with our partner community. Sprint App is a great example of our collaboration with VMware. Uh, not only we co-developed the Sprint App services, and we also cooperate it together. That means that you know our develop, our Java developers will get the sort of like the the product support services from both VMware and Microsoft together to fully support their needs. We're also making an announcement with F5 to you know to have an Nginx service that is kind of built by F5 on Azure. It will really help migrate ex and, or extend Java workload you know uh, into the cloud from their on-prem solutions. Uh, I very frequently people use Nginx for their load balancing needs, et cetera. And then for Nginx, this is another you know, close partnership between F5 and Microsoft in developing this solution together. It gives developer almost a native experiences in Azure with Azure, Azure, Pro, uh, Azure portal experiences, except you know, uh, and uh, you know, uh, CLI you know, uh, access. And we also have a very similar story with Dynatrace. Developers can deploy Dynatrace with one-click provisioning and configuration on Azure Portal, also with building security, and so it's a very native experiences. 
So these are just some of the examples of how we're working with partners to give our customers the best experiences on Azure. I love it. Awesome. This is great information, Julia. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you, Sonia. Nice talking to you.